How's it going? This is Dylan with Dylan Pickups Blog. So today we're going to talk briefly about, um, this is going to kind of be part two of our vintage versus modern kind of thing. Um, we're going to talk about what they used in vintage pickups versus what they use now and how much difference it actually makes um, to the tone. Now, whether you choose to replicate that for other reasons, like you want it to look cool or you just want it to, you just want to know that it's in there. You know, that, that's another thing, you know, obviously entirely, but when we're just discussing, you know, the materials and how they've changed and does it matter, uh, that, that's its whole, that's a kind of an, an, its own subject. So first of all, let's talk about coil wire. Coil wire, um, and this, this will probably be discussed um, for a long time because people feel differently about it, but the bottom line is copper um, is an element. And if it comes out of the ground and they don't do anything with it, except for make it into wire after refining it, um, that process has not changed a lot. And the way they um, basically stretch it or extrude it into wire, uh, that really hasn't changed either. It basically starts as a rod and it goes on these rollers and it goes from one roller to the next, to the next, to the next, and they stretch it out basically into whatever gauge of wire, uh, you know, 42, 43, 44, whatever, um, pick up, you know, pick up gauges. Um, one thing that has changed, and I got to give a shout out to my friend David on Facebook for pointing this out to me because I knew it, but I didn't really take the time to think about it. Plain enamel, which is like the purple or brown looking wire that you see on a lot of vintage pickups, um, that is one component that they do make differently now than they did back then. Uh, and it's because the chemicals that they used to make that insulation, a couple of the components in those chemicals are basically illegal to use now, so they had to change it. Uh, thanks for pointing that out to me. Now, does that actually make a difference? Um, remember that the thickness of the insulation around the wire makes more difference than what the insulation is actually made of. Now, there will be people that will dispute that. They will say, well, plain enamel wire, um, has a different, um, like it's, it's capacitance of how much capacitive loss there is between um, plain enamel insulation and poly insulation is different because of the density, blah, 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 blah. You gotta remember that in the laboratory tests where they figure all this stuff out, they're dealing with a constant frequency a constant voltage and they are we're talking numbers that are so so small in difference um, in controlled environments that when we put into a guitar pickup you know because like a guitar pickup when we are playing a guitar okay first of all a lab is like this right and when we draw all these for our videos you know we draw the sine wave and this is the AC voltage and this is the amplitude of it and this is the frequency of it and you know but that's not what our guitar signal looks like our guitar signal is all over the place it's changing all the time so to be able to say that these very 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 minute numbers make any kind of difference um, over the course of actually playing music um, you know that, that that's really <laughs> that are you going to hear it whether your wire is purple or clear because really that's the only difference no um, now the thickness of that insulation makes an absolute difference so if we're going from plain enamel single build to a poly double build where they and now the, the insulation is thicker absolutely that's going to make a difference see because anything that changes uh, the resonant peak frequency of that pickup or the frequency that it is easiest for this pickup to make. Whatever that is, is basically the definition of that. Um, whatever affects that is what's gonna, what you're gonna hear, okay? So um, that, that's really the thing. So this brings us to our other main component difference from yesteryear and today. And that is the bobbin. The bobbins of the 50s were made out of butyrate. 
The bobbins of today, most of the time, are made out of ABS. Does this make any difference in tone? Well, first of all, we need to remember why they use butyrate. Butyrate was, it, it comes from, it actually comes from some natural materials that then they process and then they make into plastic. And they discovered this in like 1890-ish or so to make some sort of plastic. Actually, it, it started using in cloth and stuff. And then they made it into a, a moldable thing. So by the 40s, they were using butyrate plastic because that's all they knew. ABS uh, was put really through like a crash course of development, like really pushed through its paces uh, during World War II uh, because they needed better technology. Uh, they did not break down. Butyrate actually will break down. Um, so ABS is obviously in everything now, but the only reason they didn't have it in the 50s is because they hadn't invented it yet. They had invented it, but it was still in, de in development and it was not in, in widespread consumer use yet. Same thing with PVC. We talk about that in our other blog post about cloth wire versus PVC wire. Same, same reason. It's just materials that were available to them, okay? Um, does it make a difference in tone? Not really, because remember, we're talking about things that could affect the resonant peak frequency of the pickup. The bobbin material, as long as it is plastic of some kind, non-conductive and not metal, okay, um, it's not gonna affect anything. It's just not. Uh, butyrate versus ABS isn't gonna make much difference. Um, whether that makes a difference to you in your particular pickups because you know it's in there, you know, that's up to you. Um, the other thing is the balsa spacer that goes in there, balsa versus you know, uh, plastic. Balsa was cheap. It used to be really, really cheap, and that's why they put it in there. ABS, obviously, plastic. The butyrate that the bobbin was made of back then was far more expensive than the balsa that they put in there, which is hilarious to me because now when you try to get a balsa spacer for a pickup, it's like two bucks for one little piece of balsa, and a piece of ABS is like, you know, 14 cents or something. So uh, is a pickup cheaper or less desirable because it has a plastic spacer in it versus a balsa one? No, as long as it's the right size. Because if it's not the right size, then the distance of the bobbin can be changed and all that kind of stuff. So, and it can be crooked and whatever. So it's gotta be the right size. Um, I actually cut my own spacers for my, for my humbuckers um, out, of, out of stock so that it's, it's the proper size. Um, now, things that do, we talked about a couple things that don't matter, things that uh, you could use updated materials and probably not change the tone. Um, but let's talk about some things that do. So, uh, covers. Nickel is the most desirable. Um, if you go back to our video on eddy currents, you'll understand what eddy currents do, how it changes, and how the cover changes the tone of the pickup. Um, the material that the cover is made of affects that because different materials have the ability to retain and produce eddy currents, okay? So copper uh, is different, brass is different than nickel. Nickel is, it doesn't retain and produce eddy currents as much as the other two. So it, it can affect, depending on the composition of it and the mixture of everything, if it has more brass in it, it can affect the tone versus the nickel. Now, back in the 50s, they used nickel, and on higher quality pickups today, they still do use nickel. Um, it, is, it is cool. It, it, it works well. Um, same thing with the base plates on the pickup. Um, there are certain big brands that use brass. There are certain very cheap brands that use brass. Um, and a lot of people will say, well, this is how you identify whether it's a cheap, less expensive, less desirable pickup because it has a brass base plate on it. That is true, except there is uh, one very large brand that has built that into their tone and they, they have figured out how to use that brass um, to make their tone. So it's not, again, it's not a de less desirable thing, especially if it's designed in. If it's just cheap, well, you know, <laughs> then it's then it's just cheap. But um, 
so nickel is is more desirable for many people if that is how they have designed their pickup to work um, same thing with the slug materials they and this is not just because it's not it's more desirable or less desirable it's just because it's how they've designed their pickups and it's because more choices have become available so you have a stainless slug you have uh, uh, like a plain mild steel slug. We use plain mild steel slugs that aren't plated with nickel. Um, in, in one model of our pickups, we use actually a, a plain steel non-plated screw in one of our pickups. We use nickel plated um, and, and the nickel plating has different ranges and variances to it. Um, so that stuff can make a difference in the tone depending on, and you can design your pickup around it. Now, just because you go to my website, let's say, and you see uh, my eight ball humbucker and it's got steel slugs in it, does that make it a cheap pickup? No, because I've designed my pickup around the, it's designed to work together. Just like that major brand of pickups that uses a brass base plate, they have designed it to work with it. It's not cheap, it's not less desirable than some vintage thing. It's just that they have, and I have in my various designs figured out how to use this particular material um, and not it's just because it's not vintage spec doesn't make it less good it just makes it different really um, as long as it's designed in if it's just you know a way to cut costs and that's where you really need to ask the questions if it's used as a way to cut costs then that's a different story but that usually is reflected in many things. So yeah, there is a bunch of stuff that does make a difference. Now, the next question is, how much difference does it make to you? Because when you make a decision on a pickup, all those materials and stuff, because this is what happens. A lot of people will go to order a pickup and they'll be like, well, it has a plastic spacer in it. That makes it junk. Well, it does, the, the pole pieces aren't plated. That makes it junk. Um, the cover is so-and-so kind of cover. It's got ABS bobbins in it. That makes it junk. Well, it's not plain enamel wire, so it's not vintage spec. Man, this is where you get into one question. Was the pickup designed to act that way? Or was it designed that way to cut costs? That's the only question you need to ask. Because every designer is going to take a material, a list of materials, and they are going to build a pickup and it is going to make a sound. Okay, so this is the next question. Does that list of materials designed into that pickup design make the sound that I want it to make? It doesn't matter if there's balsa in there. It doesn't matter if the bobbins are butyrate. It doesn't matter what the pickup is made of or the, the cover is made of. I put carbon fiber in mine. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what it's made of if you don't like how it sounds. So the next thing you should do, obviously, even before you order pickups, don't call me, don't call anybody. Go play um, as accurately as you can those old vintage pickups. Um, you might not be able to find a 59 burst, but you might be able to go to a good Gibson dealer and find one of these new VOS things that is, you know, made to be like a 59 Les Paul. Play it and play it through the amp that you play it and play it with your effects pedals, you know, the best you can um, and see if you like it. I've got a good buddy of mine who plays one of those 59, I don't know if it's a 58 or a uh, uh, I don't know if it's a 58 reissue or a 59 reissue, I can't remember. But he plays that thing through a bass man and he gets the most incredible tone. I mean, the most incredible tone. It is fantastic. I plug the guitar into my stuff and play the music that I play and I hate it. I would never want those pickups in my guitar. I do not, and I could play the same song he's playing. I could play, uh, maybe not as well, but I could play the same song he's playing and, and not like it because I just, it just doesn't work for me. So just because it says reissue after the name or vintage before the name or whatever, or 
it has plain enamel wire or it has a balsa original whatever don't make your decision based on that because what is really important is does the is the pickup designed to make the sound that it makes or is it just cutting corners no matter what the materials are and then does that sound match what i want it to sound like if not move along and go to the next one or call somebody that is capable of saying all right, I hear the sound that you want to make. I understand the sound that you make. I understand your rig and I can use this list of materials, no matter what they are, to give you the sound that you are looking for. That is so much more important than worrying about butyrate versus ABS, balsa versus ABS, plain enamel versus poly coated, all this kind of stuff. Is the pickup designed that way or is it designed to cut corners? And does that design give me the sound that I want? Those are the two questions you really need to ask more than any of this other stuff. I hope that helps. If you have any questions that you want to add to our list, because we're doing this almost every day, uh, please let us know. My name is Dylan. This is Dylan Pickups blog. You can find us on Dylan Pickups on Facebook, Dylan Pickups YouTube, all over the place. Send me a message. Um, send me an email and anytime you want to add to it, you let us know and we will, we'll do it. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you tomorrow.